Hi, I'm Bill Sissel, and this is Dr. Richard Taylor, and we are with the University of Delaware's Cooperative Extension. Today we would like to show you different types of crop residues where you can find slugs, and we want to talk to you about the damage they cause in soybeans and what that damage looks like. Slugs injure soybeans by using their rasping mouth parts to feed on cotyledon, unifoliate, and trifoliate leaves. In many cases, the most severe injury occurs prior to crop emergence. When slugs feed on soybean plants prior to emergence, the growing point is often killed, resulting in death of the plant. Once emergence has occurred, slugs will continue to feed on unifoliate and trifoliate leaves, and under unfavorable growing conditions or favorable slug conditions, they are also capable of killing seedling plants and reducing plant stand even after the soybeans have emerged. One of the greatest challenges of managing slugs in soybeans is that in many cases you don't realize you have a slug problem until you go back to a field 10 to 14 days after planting expecting to see a beautiful stand of beans only realize that you don't have a stand at all or that your stand is so sparse that replanting may be required. In Delaware we have two predominant species of slugs that injure soybeans. They include the marsh slug and the gray garden slug. The marsh slug is dark brown to black in color and produces a clear mucus. The gray garden slug is cream in color and when disturbed produces a milky white mucus. Juvenile gray garden slugs are about an eighth of an inch long and appear almost white in color. The juvenile gray garden slugs are often the most damaging in soybeans because egg hatch occurs around the same time soybeans are being planted in the spring. There are no set thresholds for slugs. However, by determining the presence of eggs, as well as newly hatched juvenile slugs, and the species of slugs present in a field, management decisions can be made to reduce the risk of slug feeding injury on soybeans.